I met Paul in 1971 in Miami, Florida during a Beauty and Barber Supply Institute's convention and it was at the Fountain Blue Hotel and introduced by Eva, E-V-A Prang, P-R-A-N-G, Eva Prang. Eva Prang was the manager of a chain salon of uh, seven salons in the Clearwater, Florida area. I knew her through the company I worked with and then she was a dear friend of Paul's and introduced her of us together and we just became the best of friends. In 1979, Paul tried to launch a, a small line called PM. And when he was there on stage, he sold products. When he left, no products were sold. I was consulting at the time, and he was my friend. So I said, Paul, let me look at what you're doing here. Maybe I consult you. So I looked at it all and found out, oops, Paul, you're paying too much money for the product. The product could possibly be a little bit better. Let me help you out as a friend. So I got friends of mine involved to try and help him out, and then we decided he is not he was not a businessman, so he also needed a businessman, but had no money, All right. So long story short, Paul and I decided, well, why don't we start a business together, okay? Paul would do the hair and the shows and help with the products. I would do the sales, marketing, help develop the products with people I know and get it out there. And we would each own 30% of our new company. And the other 40% would go to an investor. We needed $500,000. Okay. We needed $500,000 to start this company. <laughs> well, I left everything I was doing, had $500,000 coming in. <laughs> Went down to the bank, no money. Those days we didn't have cell phones, or if you did, you were in a big briefcase. We didn't, okay. But a friend ran me down, and uh, I'd left the living conditions I was in, or the, my situation, and I was going to get a hotel for the night. Anyways, uh, a friend ran me down and said, JP, I have a message for you. Call Dick Holthouse. He's in Europe. He doesn't care what hour it is. Call Collect. And he's the one that arranged for all the money. So I got a hold of me. He says, John Paul, I have bad news for you. The backer pulled out. This is the last minute, right, that day. Oh he never God. gave us a dime. And I asked him why. And this is interesting for every, your readers to know. Right. He said, "Inflate." this is 1980 now, inflation in the United States is 12.5%. Unemployment is 10.5%. Wow. If you could get a loan, interest rates are 18%. He says, I can't invest in your company, especially right. things dealing with oil. So. We had no investor, so Paul was there, came over because he wanted some of the money for his living, and I said, Paul, how much can you afford? Let's just do this ourselves. I had everything right, set up. Right, right, right. Paul said, JP, I can afford $350. $350? You got, that's it? <laughs> yep. So uh, I went ahead, and uh, I had enough money to live off of for several days, but no place to live. And I decided, and I, so I need those few hundred bucks in my pocket. So I went by my mom's. I did not tell her what was going on. I said, Mom, can I borrow $350? I'll give it back to you in a month. She said, well, you know, you're doing really good in your business. Why do you need this for? Right. I didn't want to tell her, right. hey, I left my pleasant situation. I gave right. all the money to the wife, taking care of the wife and kids for months, right? right. And I, only right. Had a few, I didn't want to tell her that. Uh, so I, and I was too proud, so I didn't tell her. Anyways, I said, let's do it. And here's the interesting story. We have $700. I had everything set up on 30 days. I had the bottle guy, the silk screener, and the filler. All set up. My friends had helped me with the formulation. For 100,000 bottles of three products, I called them all and said, hey, can I have a sample order of only 10,000 bottles of three products? And that was enough to give me 3,000 shampoo one, eight ounce, 3,000 shampoo two, eight ounce, and 4,000 the conditioner, okay, the yeah, conditioner. That, we didn't have sculpting lotion for three more months. Right. That's how we started the company. And uh, I went down Ventura Boulevard in LA, going from beauty salon to beauty salon. We decided to only be in the beauty industry. Just knocking salon to salon to salon. I remember the first salon I got to say yes, her name was Mary Ann. I don't recall the name of her salon, but she turned out to be a great account. Anyways, and then Paul went back to Hawaii and held a little class there to show people how to use it. Right. Then Paul got booked for shows, a couple shows I booked Paul for, or he had one booked already. We would appear at the show together. And I would talk about how great this product was. Paul would talk about it and show you how to use it on the right, hair. Right, right. And then we'd stick around after the show. Paul would go with one salesman. I'd go with the other salesman in the field. 
and it was the best relationship. Paul didn't do business, and I didn't do hair. I knew right, about hair, right. I'd been in the industry, so we never had an argument. <laughs> never had an argument, none. I'm gonna tell you about the name Paul Mitchell, which okay. is interesting. When we wanted to name our product, we wanted to name it a hairdressing name. Well, we came up with John Paul, nope, don't wanna use that. And then we came with, well, Paul, you're a hairdresser. And the name you chose as your hairdressing name was Paul. His name is Cyril T. Mitchell. So what we did was, and I'll, I'll bounce ahead a little no, no, bit. This is part of the story here. Right, right. In 2003 and four, people right. said, JP, Paul's dead. You've been running things here, and we believe you. you we know you've had big offers. You turned everything down. Right. You're doing really well. You have another company called Patron. You want money. They got money too, right? right. So, but JP, what if you die? Then what about these promises for us all and future generations? So I got to thinking, I own the controlling interest of Paul Mitchell. That's more than 50%, I think. Right, right. So I took my controlling interest and put it in the John Paul DeJoria Family Trust. John Paul DeJoria Family Trust. And it was a trust, this is I put it in 2004, that lasts 360 years. It was the longest trust available at the time. Well, I have 350 years left. If anything happens to me, <laughs> nobody can break up the company. The company must stay as a whole, and not one of my relatives could take a piece of it. It must stay as a whole. Wow. They share the revenues and profits off of it, but it stays as a whole. So this way, the promise is kept forever. So that's a long answer to your question, I but, know, I but love, it's a good this one. This is wonderful because I want this story. I don't think I've ever told this. I don't think anyone in our industry has told it.